All right, today what I wanna to talk about are worm gears. Uh, what we have here is a worm gear assembly where we have an input shaft hooked to a, what looks like a screw turning a gear on an output shaft. So when dealing with a worm gear assembly, really all we have is a gear connected to an input shaft, and this gear is really nothing other than a screw. And as this screw rotates, it turns a gear with which it has been meshed, which is connected to an output shaft. And so unlike a regular gear train, uh, what we have are two special gears. This gear is called a worm. And this gear is called a worm wheel. Now, normally what happens when we turn a screw is that screw moves into some base material. But when we're dealing with a, a worm gear assembly, we actually hold this screw in place. So this input shaft, if we were to, uh, to put this into some machinery, uh, this input shaft would be held in place so it could rotate, but it wouldn't be able to move left or right. And that would in turn hold this worm gear in place. And so as this rotates, the gear, or really it looks like a screw, wouldn't be free to move left and right. It would only rotate. And as this worm gear rotates, it in turn turns the worm wheel with it. And the advantage of a worm gear assembly is that it can provide an absolutely enormous mechanical advantage, and I'll show you why. If this input shaft was to rotate around once, that means this worm gear is going to rotate around once as well. Now we know if, if this worm gear, which is really just a, a screw connected to a shaft, rotates around once, these teeth are all going to effectively move one pitch over. So if this rotates around once, this tooth is effectively going to move from here to here. And so that is in turn going to drag our worm wheel one tooth over as well, because these are meshed together right along a, a line of action right here. And so if this shaft rotates around once, this worm wheel and thus with it the output shaft is only going to rotate through one tooth and the angle that is associated with one small tooth. Now this gear that I've drawn here, this worm wheel, this has a tooth count of 24 teeth. So in realizing that for every one rotation of the input shaft, this output shaft is going to rotate through only one tooth, or the angle associated with a single tooth, we can go through and work out the gear ratio or the mechanical advantage of this worm gear assembly. Now, typically we look at gear ratio as being the teeth count or tooth count of the output gear over the tooth count of the input gear. And it's tempting to start counting teeth on this worm gear, but that's that's not really what's going on here. What we need to do to look at gear ratio is we need to look at rotations. For every 24 rotations in this case of our input shaft, we're only gonna see one rotation of our output shaft. So for this worm gear assembly, the gear ratio is actually going to work out to be the number of teeth on our worm wheel over one. And what this means in practice is that we can achieve absolutely enormous gear ratios and, and thus huge mechanical advantage through using something like a worm gear. Uh, if, if we were to have a large gear, you know, something even bigger than a 24 tooth gear, let's say we put a hundred tooth gear on here, that means the input shaft would have to rotate 100 times in order to only rotate this output shaft once. So in practice, a worm gear assembly is actually a great tool to use in certain situations. If we have a situation where we need a lot of torque on an output shaft, or we need to produce a lot of torque on an output shaft, this is a great way to do that. The input shaft has to rotate around a huge number of times given this gear ratio, uh, but it's going to produce an enormous torque. Ultimately what we're doing is we're trading in rotations for torque. Uh, the other nice thing about a worm gear assembly is because we have just a little bit of sliding material against each other, this is actually an extremely efficient gear setup. And so with very little energy loss, we can have huge 
multipliers in Torque. Now what I don't want to do is get into teeth profiles and, and very specific things that deal with how warm gears mesh with warm wheels. Uh, that, that gets way more advanced than what we need to deal with today. This is just about the basics of what a warm gear does and how it can be used. So the important takeaway here is that a warm gear is really nothing other than a screw which has been meshed with a gear. And by doing this, we're actually able to achieve absolutely enormous gear ratios which can produce huge increases in torque. Now that comes at the cost of rotations, uh, but this in the right circumstance can be a very, very useful tool when applied correctly. So that's worm gears, and that's all for now.